Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com, a nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're a long-time viewer, thank you very much for coming back. If you are brand new to the channel, uh, all I ask is uh, like, like, like the videos, like the channel, come aboard, subscribe, share with your friends, tell a friend, right? Uh, and hopefully, again, I could continue uh, to give you value on the day-to-day -day basis. Usually, uh, I do these uh, updates on the weekend. My wife informed me I have 2,096 things to do this weekend. That's, that's a light weekend if you're a father. Uh, so I'm knocking everything out today. So let's talk about it. Uh, very, very ugly start to the month of September for investors. If you're a trader, you got a whole different conversation. Uh, market is very, very efficient right now. Uh, if an efficient market doesn't mean the market needs to go up, uh, an efficient market also means the market could go down. And what we saw this week, and this was arguably the worst week, not arguably, it's, it's a fact. Uh, this week was the worst, uh, week decline for the technology space since November of 2022. That was the bear market. Remember, we were down about 35% on the Qs in 2022. So it's a hell of a statement, right? Really, really hell of a statement. Uh, but what I like about this tape is you, you almost can see the train coming. Uh, if you've been watching the video uh, just for the last you know, several days after we had this really ugly reversal on Tuesday, right? Monday, the markets were off for Labor Day. But after we had this nasty, nasty engulfing candle and we lost the 50-day moving average, we kept on reiterating the point Tech is dead, right? It, it, there's no life. You know, even when they tried the dead cat balance it yesterday, the day before, there was absolutely no life. And we kept on reiterating the same names over and over again. Guys, tell me if you, if you, you know, tell me if, if this sounds familiar. Google, if this thing starts losing the 200 day moving average, it can get hit. Microsoft, if it starts losing the 200 day moving average, it can get hit, right? Stop me when, when, when this doesn't sound familiar. You know, look at look at AMD. AMD lost a major, major channel. Well, watch this thing that starts confirming this channel. And you had a lot of names over and over and over again. We'll get to today's pivots in a second. But the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that we're seeing is the lack of fight from the bulls. I, I think that's the, the, the best way of saying, although we went several times, and you can see this whole price discovery here on the 50-day moving average, and you saw this major fist fight, probably one of the more aggressive fist fights I can remember for control of the 50 day moving average but once they finally gave it up it wasn't uh you know it wasn't a res day right it wasn't a res day to go higher it was a res day to go lower and if you watch the video only on Wednesday right only on Wednesday you know we talked about it. Nvidia should you know should test its earnings lows um so the bulls you know just not putting up a fight uh, if you look at the, you know, if you look at the scoreboard for the week, really disgusting numbers. You got the S and P down four point two percent. You have the Dow Jones down about three percent, and like I mentioned earlier, the Nasdaq was down five point eight percent for the week. Again, the worst uh, display, worst decline since November two thousand and twenty-two. Again, that was the bear market. Uh, the winch Q's lost. Uh, 35%. And if you look at the individual uh, indexes, let's talk about them really quickly. Uh, you have the diamonds that were you know, trading really, really well. They, again, it was only 30 stocks, but they were trading really, really well. And then you start seeing the start of the lower highs, the lower highs, the lower highs. And now you're seeing a major a lower high. And now we're very, very close. You know, We're like within $2 of the diamonds that they're going to lose the 50-day moving average as well. Uh, if you look at the SPY, right? If you look at the SPY, SPY lost the 50-day moving average as well. And the QQQ, which obviously is near and dear to my heart because that's my specialty, we lost the 50-day or gave back the 50-day moving average on Tuesday, went sideways for the last couple of days, and today was just absolutely destruction. You're talking about flush heaven. And the question now is what happens, right? So you have the Fed talk about potential... Um, rate cuts, potentially maybe a 50 basis point cut. 
Look, I don't know how the market's going to react. Okay, I, I I don't. I don't think anybody's gonna is going to know how the market's going to react. If you told me, you know, two years ago this economy is the worst, then people are or you know having a hard time making ends meet, and they're going to start raising rates to kind of fight inflation. If you told me the market was going to meet all time highs and the market is going to rally for two years straight, right? It doesn't make sense. So the idea, yeah, the idea of now that if they're going to start cutting rates, yes, that's obviously good. For the consumer, you know, cheaper car payments, cheaper mortgages, credit card payments, so forth and so on. But you don't possibly have any idea or inkling that you you can stand on two feet and say, I know exactly what's going to happen when the market starts to cut rate. It sounds good, but how is the market going to uh, how is the market going to react? And you know, going into next week, number one, it's a very somber week. Okay, number one, we have nine eleven. Uh, you know, it's amazing to think. September 11, 2001, it was 23 years ago, man. You know how crazy that is? I remember exactly where I was at an office of generic trading. That was my first prop office uh, that I had years ago. I mean, years ago in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Uh, I know exactly where I was, who I was speaking to, what we were doing uh, with that, unfortunately, the horrific day happened. And, you know, we're, we're, we're going to what? We're five days away from that anniversary. It's amazing how time flies, how life goes quickly just like that. But you know, next week is going to be a very somber week. Uh, there's a lot of investors right now trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Like what is absolutely going on in this tape? And the most important part is where we, you know, we talk about all the time, guys, don't try to figure it out. You know, people try, you know, always convince me on social media where I think this, where they think the stock is going to be six months from now. Okay, cool, man. I'm trying to win my interval today. I'm trying to win. I'm trying to take the stock from point A to point B today. Again, I'm not smart enough. Nobody's smart enough to figure out where the market's going to be. You could pretend you are. You could try to convince yourself. You could try to pretend to convince others, but we all know we're all idiots, right? We're all idiots. So, I let the data, right? We let the data on a day-to-day basis dictate to us what we think is going to happen next. And we'll go to the pivots in a second. Really aggressive day today. Very, very strong day. Um, but the most important part is what happens next. Well, let's talk about what potentially could happen next. Okay, number one, uh, Cheers did a lot of bad things, right? A lot, a lot of bad things. Took out the 50, uh, took out the 200. And this is an, a, a new one. Uh, you know, one of the very few new ones I've been using, the 150 day uh, got broken as well. It stopped uh, literally at the stop at the um, uh, upper Bollinger Band here. You know, we watch, you know, watch this 448, right? And think about it, guys. We was we were talking about 467.89. Remember that on the weekend update of last weekend, right? We talked about, oh, let's just watch the bottom child. Because if you guys remember last weekend, we were set up to go to the upside if we were going to break above uh, the 10 day moving average. But think about this. We're at 467.89 from a week ago. Guys, that's 20 points on the queues. Today was no prize, 12 points by itself. So watch next week uh, below 448. Uh, the next measured potential move is to 442. Uh, you got the SPYs for next week. Uh, again, just shy of this 539 level, uh, which is the 89-day moving average. I know they're crazy. That's getting out of hand. At some point, we always joke about this uh, in the webinar. At some point, we're going to be impossible to put on a trade because there's a supply and demand zone everywhere. Inside joke. You know, if you're an investor, you're probably looking at this like a 12 heads. But you know, what you know, watch spies. You know, watch spies. They start losing uh that 539 area. Then you got 536 and 534. Uh and the IWM uh IWM had a horrific reversal today. Gave back uh the 50 day moving average stopped all the way at the 100 day SMA. It loses uh, 207 next week, and you have more downside. Uh, but the individual names is where the, the, the destruction uh, was. I mean, over and over and over again. And if you look at today's pivots, pretty good stuff. I mean, pretty good stuff. So this was last night's daily pivot watch. Let's actually reverse engineer this. Tesla, if you guys remember from Wednesday's video, uh, Tesla had a, a phenomenal two-day move. Absolutely phenomenal. We talked about if you guys remember, we talked about on Wednesday's video going into Thursday, hey, if Tesla could get back above the 50-day moving average, this thing can go, right? They were buying a 230 to 235 weeklies. Thir- it was great, right? Wednesday was great. We caught this move all the way from 222. The damn thing went to 235. You think to yourself, wow, this thing is just going to go absolutely nuts this morning. It opened up down two, three points. It went red to green, caught another move from that red to green move, went up $4.00. 
you know, try to, you know, when it started reversing, you know, caught another bounce off the initial test of 50 day moving average. And then Tesla started getting very, very tired. So obviously we couldn't confirm the 235 level, but that was literally, if you look here, it was literally, you know, it was absolutely literally the only long pivot we had. Everything else was to the downside because that's how everything else was setting up here. So NVIDIA, we talked about NVIDIA pretty much the whole week that, uh, again, it was inevitable that they were going to test or retest uh, the earnings lows. The earnings lows held twice, actually held three times if you go back to some uh, pre-market and after hours. But it was a you know, pretty good move. Uh, NVIDIA, 104 held twice. It's a short if it loses 104. Here was NVIDIA. NVIDIA went all the way down. Finally took out the earnings lows and went all the way down to roughly 101. Guys, watch the video for next week. This thing starts losing 101, right? Then we have the lows on deck for the eight, uh, August lows of 90. So, you know, watch that 100 level. You know, watch the 100 level for next week on NVIDIA. But that was fine. Uh, affirm, right? Affirm. Uh, you know, 39.18 is a short. Uh, if it loses 39.18, it's going to get hit. Here was a firm, right? So here was the 39.18. That's the lowest uh, defense of the five day. Again, the five days, the shortest term sentiment. Uh, it lost the five day, took out 39.18, traded all the way down to 37.84. And this is now the key level for a firm for next week. Starts losing the 37.50, 37 area. You can go all the way back down to 35. So keep on watching uh, a firm for next week. Uh, Google, remember Google guys, we've been talking about Google, just watch Wednesday's video. All we kept on reiterating the point, this thing, I kept on saying, if you think the 50 day moving average is a big deal, watch happens when it loses, uh, the, the 200 day moving average. So Google lost, lost everything, right? Here is the, here is the pivot, uh, 155, 95. It's a short, right? It's a short. It took out the whole range here that we talked about for several days and went from 155 90s all the way down to 150s. Uh, you know, this thing looks lower if the market continues down uh, next week. Uh, AMD got a hit also. Uh, 136 is a short, right? 136 is a short on AMD. Here was AMD. It took out the, the previous uh, day's channel, it took out 36, went down to 32. Again, starts losing that 31 Bollinger Band. This thing has more room to the downside. Uh, Microsoft uh, 404.37 is a short, right? Again, there was no long. So with the exception of that pivot on uh, Tesla, there was no short, that no long. That's the whole point. So it took out the 404. Remember, it took out this whole range here. Talk about the 200-day moving average for a couple of days. Uh, we traded all the way down to 400. This thing looks lower for next week if, they, if the market continues. Coinbase actually got upgraded today, right? It got upgraded. And I said, how can people be buying stocks when there's technical damage uh, in, into strength? And yeah, uh, 158 is a short, right? That's the whole point. 158 is a short on um, on Coinbase. I think we talked about Coinbase on Wednesday. You guys remember on Wednesday night we talked about Coinbase? Uh, so it took out the 58, went all the way down to 46. And Mara, same thing, Mara in the same group. Uh, Mara 1366 is a short. Here is Mara, right? So it took out 1366. Not that egregious like everything else, but again, went down about 40 cents here. Uh, some other pivots today. Again, we just started going one by one by one by one. These are the pivots from yesterday, as you can see. Crowd and all that stuff, right? AMD to the short side. Everything was to the short side. I mean, everything yesterday, this was yesterday's move. Everything literally was to the short side yesterday, and that's the whole point. The only other, other move that was nice yesterday was Amazon. It went from 176 to almost 180. So that was a nice move. But today, uh, everything was to uh, the downside. Uh, here was our pre-market our, our pre-market plan on Tesla this morning for this incredible reversal. Uh, yesterday, we claimed the 50-day moving average that got rejected off Wednesday. Any dip for today, that's basically today. Uh, for experienced traders, watch red to green. One red to green went up about four and a half, five points. And it sell still needs to confirm 235, which again, it failed off that area. And then, you know, Tesla flying, uh, Tesla flying. And yeah, this was at pre market, right? And I, this is my notes 235 is yesterday's highs. If it stalls out there, sell more. It stalled out of the 234, uh, 50s area today. So it's a really, really, uh, really, really good move. So here is, you know, just the pivots. You know, we talked about uh, NVIDIA got killed. Uh, M SMCI smoked, right? SMCI. Uh, 400. We talked about SMCI in the last couple of days as well. SMCI 400 pre-market lows and 395. If it confirms, sellers could come in. More sellers come in. SMCI 
uh, got hit, right? Got hit, took out the 400, took out the 395, uh, closed pretty much at the lows in the 80s. Looks like a more downside route uh, continues. Uh, Meta, Meta. the funny thing is Meta actually went up about $3. I don't think none of us had traded it. It just went up in seconds. But everything else, uh, everything else was just destruction. Google destruction, AMD destruction. This was actually one of the balances I took on Tesla. Uh, I took two balances on Tesla. One was like a dollar fifty, dollar sixty winner, uh, and the other one is here's the fifty day. This is when you knew things were wrong. Uh, when when it only bounced like thirty, forty cents off the fifty day, you just broke even and got absolutely slammed. And I believe that is it. Yeah, that's it. So uh, going into next week uh, again, unless some crazy crazy macro, uh, you know, some crazy macro news comes up and saves the bulls. It's going to be a very, very tough time for investors to kind of, you know, find their footing. Um, you know, again, the, the key is if you are an investor, um, again, figure out how you want to handle your portfolio. If you are a trader, we're getting some great value, guys. We're getting some great value. And let me give you guys uh, some ideas for, for next week, right? Let me give you guys some ideas for next week. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, again, watch NVIDIA, starts losing 100. Basically it, you know, starts losing 100. Uh, this thing's going to get hit. Look at snow. Look how close the snow is to a macro earnings lows, right? Watch snow for next week, starts losing the macro lows, uh, can get hit. Look at Amazon. Amazon looked great two days ago, not so much. Look how close Amazon is to getting to this bottom channel here. Let's keep an eye as well. Uh, Meta. Meta was strong as hell. Meta lost the 50-day moving average today. Again, watch this thing for, for, for next week as well. Uh, ZS. Remember we were talking about ZS on Wednesday? Guys, look how long this base is. It's, it's kind of like an expanded Tesla, not Tesla, uh, Google range, right? Google had a big channel. This is a bigger channel. Watch the ZS. Starts losing the May lows. This thing can absolutely get mauled. Absolutely mauled. Remember, this thing was down 35% two days ago. It's digesting. It's not resting to go higher. It's resting to go lower. So watch this thing for next week as well. And Tesla, talk about going from the penthouse to the outhouse. Man, oh man, we're going to watch this thing for next week, right? This thing starts losing. Again, it's not It's not at that point yet it's going gonna, it's gonna to start losing major, major channels. But if it starts working itself down, uh, the bottom range here from the August lows uh, definitely is something that interests me. So that's it, guys. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is trading well. Hope everybody is developing uh, at your pace. Don't get frustrated. Don't get down on yourself. Uh, this business is a lot to take in. It really is. You got to find your mental balance. You got to find your financial balance. You got to find your outlets of how to release yourself so you don't you know, implode inside. And it's hard. It's supposed to be hard. You know, this is, you know, this is, you know, there's a very small roadmap in this business. When I started towards uh, the end of uh, the, you know, the, the late 90s, there was only, you know, a handful of people trading at least, you know, actively um, longer than me or, you know, you know, and that one of them was my off and it was only, you only started trading five years before me. So there was no roadmap. Now you have a roadmap. You have a blueprint. You have sophisticated strategies. You have, uh, you know, all this information on the internet, okay. Use it wisely. Pro, you know, pro, pro, project your project your professionalism by putting in the work. Again, it doesn't just open up one day and you become a professional trader. You got to go through it, right? As all of us know, you got to go through it mentally, financially, and then once you find your sweet spot, keep on working on it. You know, don't give up. You know, the whole thing. Don't give up. Don't get down on yourself. And eventually, with enough screen time things will start to click. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Great job this week. And with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.